Hello, hello. Morning, everyone. Uh, let me just uh, bring in the chat. All righty. Hey, Francisco, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to the stream, everybody. I'm just going to get started in just a second. Let me know if you can hear me all right and if you can see the screen. All right, cool. Alrighty, so I was just bringing in my references on the other screen. Uh, just in case, just in case you don't know, guys, what we are working on and what we've been working on for the past couple of streams is this cassowary um, creature. I started more like a, uh, it started more like a sketch that I wanted to take into a weird creature type of thing. But um, I don't know. I think it's a good practice, and so I'm just aiming for something uh, relatively close to the real thing. So I'm just gonna bring in some of the references that I'm using, so you know. Uh, and I'm using pure ref to collect all my references. So this is just a bunch of cassowaries. The idea is to get something close to some of these <laughs> creatures. Um, so today we're gonna be working on, you know, more high frequency details like wrinkles, pores, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm gonna show you a couple of techniques, a couple of the brushes that I've built for that. Um, I can show you how to create your own as well. Uh, a pretty simple way to do it. And um, yeah, we're gonna do that. Add some poly paint, and if we have a chance, maybe some fiber mesh, at least for the um, the eyelashes and the, you know, yeah, I think they're eyelashes anyway. Yeah, for the eyelashes and around the the ear and that sort of thing. Because uh, I'm not gonna create the entire body. It's just the it's just the head. The the, the focus was on the wrinkles and and these interesting shapes. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to show you what I've been using as a reference. And I have a, I have like two images that I could find that were like relatively high res, and those are the ones that I'm using for the wrinkles. Um, let's have a look at the chat. Hey Khalil, how's it going? Numa, can you model anime characters? Uh, I haven't. I mean, I it's <laughs> yeah. I, I guess the the short answer is yes. The the, the longer answer is um, I haven't actually gone through the process of creating an anime character just because I'm not a hundred percent I'm not a huge fan of anime <laughs> to be honest I, I really like some of the stories of the anime um, you know series of movies that sort of thing but um, I'm not a huge fan of the style so uh, and, and not not to say that isn't they're not great stuff around the like um, the, the simplification is something that is uh, that I usually struggle with uh, as in you know, create something that is very, very appealing with just a few lines is just one of the things that I I struggle the most, and I like to practice that. But with anime, I'm not. Um, I know that if I get into a project where I'm working on anime style, I'll probably get bored uh, pretty soon. So I haven't actually done it. But it is the process is exactly the same thing as you know doing a creature or whatever. It's just the the stylization and the and the blocking of the forms, uh, the detailing is is going to be slightly different. Alrighty, so um, I'm going to start by showing you what we currently have and we're going to get into some of the details. So we have a the head of the cassowary. I created a custom cam view. So as I move around my main shapes, you'll see that the cam view is actually rotating around. Uh, and that's, I mean, I covered that a few streams ago, but it's super easy. Once you have something that you like, you can go to the preference palette and here on the cam view, in the sub palette, you just click make cam view and series is going to create uh, a series of screenshots from different angles. Uh, I think it's eight, eight shots uh, all around and four levels of elevation. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, you can just count them, but uh, it will create a texture like this and then it will be in there, right? And this is not, you know, it's not going to be replacing your current cam view or uh, you know, permanently deleting the other ones. Uh, you can just click the next button and it will come back to the default ones and then you will lose this one. If you want to create a new one, you just need to create a new cam view and that's pretty much it. Um, we have a, 
already retopologized um, geometry. We use Siri measure for that. If you want to have a look at how this was done, you can go to the previous stream. We covered all that. Um, and currently we have a subdivision level of four with pretty high number. We have nine, nine and a half million polygons. So that's, that's pretty much all we need to actually get into detailing. Um, yeah, other than that, we can just jump right into it. Uh, there's one thing that I want to mention. Um, you know, looking at references and that sort of thing. Right, and, and this is important for the uh, kind of like the, the secondary shapes that we have already established and going into details, sort of kind of like the, the transition between what we've already done and the more high frequency details. Um, so that would be that if if you look at references or, or the way that this uh, sort of like wrinkle flow works, you have like chunky bits here at the back, right, all around this area. And when you move forward or closer to the to the front part of the Kasawari neck, um, things start to get like quite tight um, and smaller. So it's like a nice transition between the shapes, right? So we got these ones right, as in we already have established them, and we have a, a rough idea of how these ones might work, right? But now the the whole point of this transition and, and detailing would be to um, work on this a little bit more so that it's more evident the sort of like the secondary uh, secondary shapes here and the more tertiary shapes on this side um, at least you know hopefully that makes sense but we're gonna sort of move into those details and then polypaint and all that so all right let's see and also break a little bit the the symmetry that we have so I left this kind of like untouched for um, in the kind of like the center line and that is part of the idea of detailing. So um, I think the best thing or the, yeah, what I want to do first is to establish some of the the main like details, if that makes sense. So I'm going to use a, a brush that I made myself called the butter knife. And this butter knife, I'll get closer here and I'll show you what it does, is, is based on the, I think it's the slash the slash brush that I use as a base, uh, but basically it allows you to cut very sharp into the model, almost like a damp standard brush, uh, and it behaves it behaves differently depending on how much pressure you apply. So it's kind of like one of those double action brushes that I did um, a while back. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's just a, a silly name that I came up with because it behaves the brush it behaves differently depending on how much uh, how fast you apply it or how how much pressure so if I apply pressure on this one you see it's slightly different um, but you know it will be more evident if you actually do it yourself but anyway this is the this is one of the brushes that I could use uh, but I'm gonna keep it simple I mean I just wanted to show you that that's one of the uh, ideas of creating custom brushes, but I'm going to keep it simple and use something that you could also use to follow along. Um, and I'm going to use the dumb standard. All right. Cool. So I'm going to reduce my brush size. And I'm just going to start refining some of these, some of these lines in here. And this area around the eye, I'm going to go into solo mode as well, it's very kind of like polished leather. <laughs> so the wrinkles here are very are very sharp. And in between the wrinkles, the, the surface is very, very smooth. Kind of like a yeah, kind of tight leather sort of thing. So at this point, it's... um. <clears throat> it's all about patience and this is the type of thing or this this detailing stage is the type of thing that I would do for example in um, in the mobile studio pro so someone um, asked me a while back I don't know if you guys have seen or if you follow the uh, some of the stuff that I post on Instagram uh, someone asked me about the you know a few people actually asked me about the the um, workstation and you know the different things that I use on a daily basis to work and how I balance kind of like the you know my well-being and and work and that sort of thing so what I did was to put a series of posts so if you go to my Instagram stories um, they're all there and basically they show 
my workstation. So what I have in terms of, you know, my desk and the Cintiq and that sort of thing. Um, and a bunch of extra stuff that I use to, you know, keep keep myself active and, and healthy. Uh, working so many hours in front of the computer is, uh, is a huge, for me at least, it's, a, it's very important, um, you know, otherwise my body will just <laughs> get um, get into this, I don't know, this, um, this mode that is just, uh, can be bothered and it's very easy to fall into that. So I'll try to keep myself active in, in a way. Um, this year I started to do some extra extra exercise or sports and um, yeah. So I posted all that in the Instagram and the, the whole point of this is that um, one of the things that I do is I switch between the, the standing desk, for example, where I have this in Teak um, and the, the Mobile Studio Pro where I can just chill um, you know, watching Netflix or, or something like that. Um, so someone asked me about that, like, what, how do you, how do you transfer? How do you switch between the Cintiq and the and the Mobile Studio Pro, for example? Um, the Mobile Studio Pro being the the Wacom, you know, the mobile um, tablet, um, which I have next to me, and um, and yeah, it's sometimes depending on how you how you see it. It could be, oops, uh-oh, my ZBrush just froze. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, guys, let me know if you can still see me. My my pen just um, stopped working. Brilliant. I'm going to have to reset this. Uh, this has ha this hadn't happened for a long time, but to be honest, I have quite a few things open at the moment. Give me one second. I'm gonna try to ah <sighs> yeah. So my my pen is gone. My whole tablet is gone. Um. So, cool. All right, so I've closed <laughs> probably everything that was too heavy for the computer. Let's see if I can restart this. Ah, oh, it's, it's boiling in here as well. It's really, really hot. Um, whack a moon. Someone sent me um, someone sent me something to automatically restart this, but it hasn't worked for me. All right, so I'm just gonna wait until this restarts. And I think yeah, it was it was mainly my fault. I had a, a few other software running. I was editing a tutorial, and I had pretty much all the software that I use in Adobe open and that's eating up some of the, the processing power of the computer. Okay, so restarted. Cool. So I have have my pen again, but I have no pressure. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna do a quick save and restart Seabrush now. Oops. So quick save. Um, Hmm. <sighs> What's 
sorry about these guys. Um, okay, sorry. I don't know what it's doing. Um, closing. Yep. I was looking at other other birds that are pretty cool looking. This this turkey is just very weird. So. Let's move that out of the way. Let's see if we can come back to this. All right, so, cool. We're back to normal. Oh, it's bloody hot in here. All right, sorry about that, guys. So let's go back. Um, so I forgot what I was saying. I was just adding details. Oh yeah, I was talking about the. Uh, someone asked me what's the how to switch between, you know, the Cintiq to the to the tablet, or like why why having the, the two, or how do I use those two? Like it's in why would I prefer to use the tablet when I have the Cintiq and and vice versa? What what's the difference and why do I keep the, the both and, and all that. So the short answer is because one is mobile and obviously the Cintiq is definitely not. Um, so with the Mobile Studio Pro I can just move around and I can take trips and still uh, it's a very powerful computer to you know sketch and start the ideas in there. Um, I usually use it as a, as a starting point or as a finishing point uh, at certain stages of the process. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, to give you an example, this thing that I'm doing right now, this is just very therapeutic for me. It's very, you know, I can I can just sit whatever and then just start doing these type of things, spend as much time as I need to adding these details and, you know, because the, the, the primary forms and the secondary forms, that's, uh, that's where I would spend most of the time in terms of um, ensuring that they're working, the transitions, the, the volumes and everything like that, that they're working fine. So when I get to this stage, as you can see, what I've been doing is just follow what is already in here, basically. So I don't have to, to think about the design too much. I don't have to think about how things really work because that's already solved in a way. That part of the puzzle is kind of like solved when, I, when I'm happy with the secondary forms. And that's something that I do in the Cintiq and I use uh, heaps of references as well and that sort of thing. So basically the past couple of streams about this Casa Worry, that's something that I would do in, in the Cintiq for sure. Um, then um, also, I could also use the the Wacom um, Studio Pro, the mobile one, to sort of sketch out the original, you know, um, the original base mesh. But that's not to say that you cannot do a full project in there. Um, so just to sum up, basically what I do is when I get to this stage that I don't, you know, I can just spend a lot of time doing this. Uh, I will just save this in, a, I have a, a, an internal network at home. So I can just save it in one of the, the network drives and then grab my, my mobile studio pro, go to the lounge room and, you know, put some, you know, the Witcher or <laughs> something like that. Um, and then just start doing this more in a more relaxed way. So uh, I sometimes do this in the afternoons or whatever. So I could keep working on adding details and all that, but it's uh, like I've been saying for a while, for me, adding details is very simple because of the, the way that Sivrush works. It allows you to create very intricate and very, very detailed stuff very easily. The hard part is to come up with, you know, the primary and secondary shapes that so kind of like things that work, right? And I'm obviously looking at some reference here, trying to establish the main tiny wrinkles. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully that answers that question that someone posted, like how I do, do the transition and how do I save files. And uh, the files, the transfer of the files and the moving files between one and the other, as in between one computer and the tablet, uh, it's basically, just using a, a network drive. I'll just save it in there and I can pick it up from anywhere. Uh, in fact, because I have this um, RAID system, which basically allows you to have your own cloud in a way. 
So as long as I have internet and I have the file in the in the server, I can access it from anywhere. So I can basically take my tablet anywhere I want and just access the file that I'm working on, save it and or, or do whatever work I need, save it and then come back home and I would have you know an up to date file. So it's incredibly useful when when traveling and, and all that. So yeah, hopefully that answers the question. Um, so anyway, what I'm doing here is uh, trying to establish some of the the, the main um, tertiary wrinkles in a way. So breaking breaking that flow in a way. So instead of just following these exact same lines that I created, I, I will start. I'm going to exaggerate it here, but I want to start doing this this type of things in a way that makes sense, obviously, but it is exaggerate that we what we already have and start to break some of these main chunks of of flesh with um, additional wrinkles right but obviously this is something that we can do with a custom brush i just wanted to add a, a little bit more of you know these these lines here, here to um, to make sure that everything flows nicely And this is very flat at the moment. So this is basically still cutting through through the mesh, adding some indentations, but there's no volume. And that's that's gonna be the second part of this detailing process. But for the most part, you see it's very repetitive. It's just looking at the references, um, stopping now and again, looking at it from afar, going back. There's not a lot of um, design thinking at this point, other, other than just follow the what you have already established. And that's why I tend to do this in a more relaxed environment when I'm just really don't have to think about much, just follow what I have already, kind of like the map that I have already created. So like I said, this is a bit flat, so I'm gonna bring in my standard brush and try to go over some of these wrinkles to add some volume. Switch to the material that is more shiny so that we can see more volumes or the volumes a bit better. Okay, I think this is working as a, as a first pass. Obviously we're gonna have to come back to this um, once we get to the custom brush. Uh, some activity in the chat, let me just see what's going on. Uh, thumbnail, thumbnail, thumbnail. Maybe, yep, <laughs> sorry. Get rid of the thumbnail. Um, hey, side effects, how's it going? So Francisco, are you working uh, at any studio or freelance? I work for my own studio, so freelancing mostly. Cool. Who are you from? Working Dynamesh mode? Um, no, I'm not. I'm not working on the Dynamesh anymore. So this is already a retopologized version of the Cassowary. Uh, that's something that we did in the last stream. So I'm already working in a yeah like a much better topology, and we have about 9.5 million polygons for for this detailing process that we started today. I'm going to use layers. Yeah, I'm going to use layers and morph targets and and all that. I just wanted to give you a quick rundown. Uh, of course, again, this is something that I would spend a little bit more time than than this, um, uh, but obviously this becomes a very repetitive thing to, and, and probably boring for you guys to, to watch. So uh, I just wanted to give you a quick intro of how I would approach this process in a more manual way. And then I start using some of the, the custom brushes and you'll see why, um, why, why I would use custom brushes and how I use them just to speed up the, the workflow a little bit more, especially when I'm just doing a concept 
they are incredibly useful to just you know bring some details quickly um, into the model and then um, refine them later. I'm just going to refine some of these volumes a bit more. Just add in some add some gravity here, and we can create our custom brush. So I'm gonna add a few a few pieces of volume in, in here without symmetry. Actually, let's bring in symmetry first, and I'm gonna switch to a custom brush called the Extra Standard. And this is just based on the standard brush, but it allows you to add volumes a little bit quickly or like faster than the than the standard brush. And I'm just doing that to add a secondary sort of main shape in here, which is something that the cassowary has. Or at least it is very evident in the reference. Um, this is a brush that I also use a lot without lazy mouse, just to create these type of things very quickly. So it's like a standard brush, but it has a lot more uh, strength, right? Oh no. Oh no, don't tell me this is crashed again. <sighs> Yep, so today is full of technical issues. So Zebra's crashed and the whole computer did as well. No good. Maybe it's because actually we're working on a lot of with a lot of polygons. Yep, no. The tablet crashed again. Ah, uh, sorry about this guys. Not ideal. kind of like interrupts the whole flow of the thing, which is annoying. But you know what, this is this used to happen quite a bit before. Last year was very annoying. Um, I don't know, it's just every time that probably Windows does an update or something, it just breaks, something breaks and it's really annoying. Right. Second round. Let's see. Let's do a quick new document. Gray load. All right. Back in business. <laughs> um, I think what I'll do is I'm going to work on maybe subdivision level three. So we only have two million polygons visible. This is still a pretty decent, you know, resolution. Uh, and to be fair, I wouldn't go above five or four million um, for details. If I, <clears throat> if I need to add more details or add, I need more resolution, I generally speaking will go into uh, HD geometry. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring in a custom brush so that I can show you <laughs> the next process uh, so that we can get to polypaint as well. So in my lightbox, I have a set of custom brushes. So uh, I'm gonna use the skin pack. This is something that I did for uh, kind of like human skin, but most of these brushes will work very generic, in a very generic way for anything. And um, yeah, you can, you can find these ones online in, in the ZBrush Guides website, you can um, just, or just Google skin brushes for ZBrush or you'll find them somewhere. Um, these ones, I mean, they come, this this pack, if you download it, it comes with a, a, a quick guide that describes each one of the brushes, what they do, how to use them. Um, but 
one of the things that some people might not get straight away is that these brushes, not all of them, in fact, most of them are not like what you would expect in and skin detail brushes, which are alpha based to just click and drag. So to give you an example, um, for example, this single pore, this is a brush that um, behaves and works in, in the way that most people expect a skin detail brush or a, an alpha brush to work, right? You just load it, click and drag, and it creates a single pore, right? Like in this case. So you can just click and drag and start adding these pores, right? So that is one way to do it. And that is the thing, that's the, I think that's the, the main issue that people would expect that that's how the brushes behave. But in fact, 90%, 80% of the brushes in this pack, they don't work that way. They don't work in just like click and drag. Um, in fact, the, the way that these brushes work is just like any sculpting brushes. And that's why I, I created those because uh, just to, to help myself in, in the process, but also, you know, I make them available so that people use them in the same way. So um, I'm going to use a few of them just as well as a, as a quick semi-tutorial on how to use them because they're very powerful and, you know, they, they can help you create things very quickly. So um, I think I'm going to go for, let's see. I'm going to use this lip detailing. I'm going to double click on that. Um, and again, it is it has an alpha and it's based on alpha, but it has a bunch of extra uh, settings that allows you to work very quickly. So with this one, I can go ahead and start doing this type of thing. And you'll see that it creates a bunch of wrinkles in one go. Uh, so this one is something that I use as, you know, to, to establish some of the bases for the lips. Um, but in this case, we can just go ahead and, and work um, on this area without symmetry. So I'm going to store a morph target and start adding detail like this. So you'll see it's very, it's very simple as in the way that it actually works. It's just that the expectation is that this is an alpha, a click and drag alpha to add wrinkles, which is not, is more a sculpting brush than anything. And you could do this manually, totally, totally um, doable. It's just that it saves time. And I think that's the case for most of the custom brushes that are out there. and Or at least that's the case for the brushes that I create. They are more than anything little little shortcuts to to help you with the with the workflow speed up the workflow so it, it they tend to do things that you could totally do manually um, with a little bit more time but they they you know they tend to speed up the workflow quite a bit so just by doing that I can generate all of this wrinkle work very quickly and still feels a little bit flat but that's something that we can come back and refine we still have the morph target, so I'm not too worried about, you know, damaging certain areas. Like here, this looks a little bit weird. We can smooth that out. So the the other thing about this brush is that again is it creates the the wrinkles but it doesn't add much volume and the point or the idea with that is that you can you can use this to establish those those wrinkles and then you can come back with the inflate brush and you know tighten tighten them up and um, make sure that the volume is more intentional. So this is one, one brush, for example, one custom brush. It just allows you to do this very quickly. I'm going to jump into symmetry again and start adding some wrinkles in here. Um, and maybe this is also a good opportunity to mention that some of the brushes, like in this skin 
skin brush pack they're they're not restricted to you know human skin you can make them work for for anything because again the point is that they're not just alphas right they are actual brushes or sculpting brushes that you can use in the same way that I've been using the, the standard brush or the damp standard brush they they would work just fine so that's really how I how I use these brushes and again I'm doing it a little bit loose in here uh, for two reasons one is you know the time <laughs> and I want to show you a few more and I'm kind of like rushing through it just because in case serious crashes on me again um, but also because I have a morph target so I'm not too worried about destroying some of these shapes because I can revert back to what I had in the, the morph target and also I have the you know since serious 2020 I have the uh, history recall brush this one here so I can go back in time and it's, it's like having a, a morph target permanently on you don't have to remember setting up a morph target at the beginning you can just do this all right so this is pretty loose like i said it's not it's just to generate some texture here So let's say I'm happy with this. I'm going to bring in the morph brush now or the morph target brush. M morph and I can just start refining this a little bit. So that it doesn't have all of those wrinkles. It's kind of like trying to to rescue those secondary shapes after adding those details because they will deform the surface a little bit. So if you do a combination of these and also maybe the, the sculpting layers, it would be definitely uh, definitely ideal, I think, in terms of, of workflow. So I'm not just going over the entire thing. I think some of the, the wrinkles are actually working. It's more about the, uh, re like I said, rescuing the, the secondary shapes more than anything. And that's really why morph targets in the sculpting process are absolutely amazing. All right, so I'm gonna go into inflate. I'm gonna add this a bit of volume just to inflate and tighten up these wrinkles here. And I also have symmetry enabled. So um, working with symmetry over an area that already has, uh, well, that is not symmetrical like in this case, it kind of generates sometimes a an, a nice variation sometimes you could actually make one side to look really good and the other one look crap <laughs> but um you know for the most part i think having that uh, you know s symmetry in having not having a non-symmetrical area and working with symmetry is it could be quite useful just to generate this sort of like um uneven surface not all the time but that's that's how I'm using it at this at this point. All right. So a quick save just in case, and we'll jump into another custom brush. And I, w I think we're gonna have time to actually create one. I'll show you guys how to do it. It's relatively simple the process i mean it's really simple is is more about the what you want the actual brush to do that's what you might take time to fine tune it but it's really simple all right cool no questions so far awesome all right so i'm going to bring in a another brush and this one will be added into its own layer so that we can you know work a little bit faster um, actually I was just thinking that hmm you know what I'm, I'm gonna show you how to do a custom brush very quickly 
um, and then we add some other details. So um, to do a custom brush nowadays with the extractor brushes is super, super simple. And in the, you know, as, as you work or as, as you progress in the, in the sculpture, grabbing details from it is, is very, very easy. So something that I do often now, since again, since the introduction of the extractor brushes is I could be working on an area and I can, let's say, if I want to add wrinkles, I'm going to take something from um, from this more flat area. I mean, you can do it directly on the um, on the surface, and ZBrush is going to look at the difference between what you had before you set the marker and what you had before. But just for vi like to help me visually to understand the details that I'm actually creating, I try to do it in a flat surface, and then just come back and and erase those. So in this case. All I all I need to do um, to make this workflow, uh, like to start a workflow, is just holding the control key and key and click on this um, undo history. So I'm gonna hold control. There you go. So there's like this little white line that indicates that Sibrius is sort of like storing the current um, state of the model. It's like a like a morph target, right? Actually, I'm gonna delete the morph target. I don't need it anymore. Um, so it's like storing a, ver a current version of the model. So anything that I do after, it will be um, it will be remembered from this point onwards. So it will make more sense when I do it. So I'm gonna create some kind of wrinkles that I can use for the rest of the neck. So I'm gonna do something like that. This is too too close together. So it's it's very similar to the pattern that I have already created in the neck. Right? And I'm gonna smooth some of these these parts and I'm also gonna bring in the inflate brush and the inflate brush I'm gonna use that to add some volume. So I basically created the same pattern that I use for the neck in this area. And this is just temporary. Of course, I'm going to get rid of this after I finish and after I create the, the brush. And you can do this as detailed as you want. Uh, let's actually bring in the sorry the standard brush. All right, a bit of smoothing, and we are ready to go. So this would be the equivalent of creating an alpha, uh, but we do it right from the you know inside the actual project or within the mesh that we're working on, and we can remove some of these things afterwards. All right, so the way that these ex extractor brushes work is very simple. Again, I have already established this marker indicated with this white um, rectangle here. And all I need to do is switch to the extractor brush that I want to use. So in this case, I want to be able to just draw, uh, kind of like roll the alpha, um, similar to the, the brush that I just showed you. So I'm going to select a larger brush size, something that sort of uh, covers the, the width of these details. Maybe that's too much. Like that. Then I'm going to click on the extractor brush and these ones you'll find them somewhere here. Right? The extractor, extract, extract, extractor, extractor dot and extractor drag rect. So I have these two here. So the extractor, um, once you select it, you need to press the, the letter G in your keyboard or in the alpha, I think it's in the alpha. Yeah, so in the alpha palette, you have this from brush, and this is a switch that uh, the, the shortcut is G. So just for convenience, I created a custom button here, which is just G. <laughs> so um, I don't have to actually go to the alpha or anything like that. Um, I could press just G on my keyboard, but it's just easy to click on that. And you'll see the course of changes to this 
blue color and now I can click and drag from probably from here click and drag and the extractor is going to extract those details from the point that we established with the control key um, if you want a, a more in-depth sort of like tutorial um, guide on how these brushes work you can go to the zbrush guides website and in the in the full overview that i did on zbrush 2020 it it's there and, and i go through some of them the different brushes how to use them and that sort of thing but this is another very simple approach so now i have with the structure brush once zbrush finishes i can just do this and you see i have a little that's pretty low intensity i'm going to increase the intensity oops that's too much <laughs> I think I did impress probably. There we go. So now I have this this brush that works really nicely. Um, you can sort of see a little bit of the breaking in here. So we could go ahead and and tweak that later on. But I think a simple smooth would work would work fine. Uh, and this is a brush that again we're gonna use to add kind of like soft details and go over itself a few times just to create this wrinkly effect. So I think for now it's working fine. Uh, you can refine this as much as you want. I just want to show you another process of creating your own custom brushes. So what I'll do now is I'm going to remove this. And to do that, I can go ahead. Uh, I have already established this sort of like marker. I go to my history brush and I can just oops, turn off symmetry and then just delete that in both sides. It's just as easy as that. So, um, because we have established this marker, Sirius will remember this, this specific uh, point in time. So we can extract details from this point onwards, and we can also use the history recall brush to remove those details. And we have the extractor brush with the details that we can use. And of course, you can go ahead and save this uh, if you wanted to. Um, that's new in Zbrush 2020. Yep, correct. So like I said, if you go to the Zbrush guides, there is a whole overview of the Zbrush 2020 version and I cover the extractor brushes, which are absolutely fantastic for sculpting. So now that we have this, what I'll do is I'm going to do two things. I'm going to store a morph target just in case. Uh, but like I said, you have with the history brush, you have a permanent <laughs> a store morph target. It's just that I like, I'm used to this process. I have to sort of like switch my my thinking process a little bit um, and I'm also going to uh, create a layer a sculpting layer so I'm going to click new um, oops I forgot that we have an extra subdivision level so I'm going to go into the fourth subdivision level and you know what I think right now the difference is not much we won't need as many so I'm going to delete it so I'll delete higher yeah it doesn't matter so I'm going to do the, again, delete morph target, store morph target, new layer. So uh, as soon as you click new layer, it starts recording by default. And I have symmetry and the new brush that we just created. So I'm going to start adding these details. Like so. And I like that they look a little bit blobby and they're sort of like overriding what we did a little bit, but um, that's part of the process as well. So in this case, rather than, than following the, the lines of the, the wrinkles that we have created already, I'm trying to go diagonally one way. And then I can go back the other way around so this way with less intensity and that should that should give us a, a good a good effect and to be honest I, I just wanted to show you this but uh, in in my workflow I would go first with pores for example I would add the pores first um, and then I will do the wrinkles not the other way around because the wrinkles will deform the pores whereas the pores if I add wrinkles first and then and then do pores then the pores are going to be uh, too perfect right there won't be any 
any influence of the of the wrinkles over the pores if I do that after. So I'm, I'm doing it backwards in terms of workflow, but I wanted to, to point that out. And the reason I'm doing it kind of like, again, very loose is because I have the morph target and I have and I have a, a layer as well recording so I can modulate the intensity later. So I can go over the entire neck of this cassowary, adding details very quickly. And I know um, I'm sort of like destroying a little bit of the, the sculpting work that we did in the secondary shapes, um, but I'm not too worried about that. Because again, these, these kind of like wrinkles or pattern that we're creating right now, that's gonna be, it's not gonna be as uh, strong. This is just to get us started with something. You'll see why in a second. I'm gonna turn down the intensity of this layer quite a bit and then refine certain areas with the with the morph target as well. But with a custom brush, it's very, very simple to get to this stage. Right, like if, if you look at it from the distance, it looks quite interesting. So for a concept and something that you just need to present the idea, get it out of the way, or not get it out of the way, but um, get it out of your head, like the idea that you have in your head. This is very quick and very simple. That's why I like working this way. All right, let's do a bit of work here on the head. And then we start toning it down and add more of the um, the pattern of, of a skin. And I'm gonna show you some other custom brushes that are pretty cool and how to use them. All right, so I just wanna show you a little bit of what I did here um, so that you understand the, the process. Um, Comics Legend, is it a good habit to save the extractor brush for later use um, every time a new one is created? The extractor brush, um, oh, okay, yeah, so if you like the brush, like the one that I have right now, if you like it, save it because um, you will override the, uh, you override the, every time that you create a new extractor brush, you will override the previous alpha. However, if you forget, uh, don't panic because Sirius will create an alpha. So um, in the alpha palette, I should have the one that I created. See, so this is the alpha. This is the cool alpha that was created for these details. So if I do uh, a new extractor or if I create a new brush right now, it will replace this alpha and you know, or the brush will use a different alpha. But if you wanna go back to the previous one, just select the alpha. So it will be created here. So yeah, it's uh, you could save it totally. But the it's it's only the alpha like the the settings of the actual brush that's what uh, it won't change that's why it's already ready to go and it's really cool um, so all you have to do is change the alphas so every time you create one it's gonna just simply be a new alpha so you can actually just save the alphas as images all right so now that I have this in here right um, I can go ahead and go to my morph target where's my morph target oh I took it out of it was here <laughs> my morph target was here anyway um, I have to check my my UI my custom UI all right so with the morph target what I'll do is very softly remove some of these details back some of the the details that I or the the volumes that I had before but it's very 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 softly applied so not with a lot of pressure, just tiny bit. Now the point of this is 
to variate the intensity once we modulate the layer. And what I mean by that is right now everything has almost the same the same strength all around, the details at least. And what happens is that even if if I use layers to you know combine different details, uh, ultimately the the layer is just from zero to one, right? Uh, a single value, a linear value from zero to one. So doing this morph target before I actually tweak the layer is going to give me a lot more um, contrast and a lot more variation. And also it allows me to control certain areas. So for example, at the back, this very wrinkly, these um, these blobs, they're actually, uh, because they, they have volume and they have weight, uh, they, they would tend to have less wrinkles than these areas here. It's sort of like more, they're putting pressure on the screen, so it's stretching it a bit. So I would just reduce the amount of wrinkles in these areas. Right? Um, but of course, then we go with the, with the layer and we continue to refine this. Uh, but just adding a little bit of this manual refinement with the morph target or the morph brush, it really helps to to create that variation, which is I think is very important. Okay, so we have that layer. We can just go ahead and uh, stop recording and rename it. Call it uh, Wrinkles01. Cool. Uh, let's go ahead and do a quick save. And I'm going to bring in a another custom brush. And this one would be the pores. So this is the one that's one of my favorites. I'm going to clear some of these. Um, it's going to modify a tiny bit. And I'm going to create a new layer. Uh, I'm going to do the effect here so that is visible what this one does. So these ones are pores and it works this way. So it's a double action brush that allows you to. So if I press softly, it just generates this size um, pores. If I press really hard, it's going to be very, very strong. Right. But it also has a secondary effect. So this everything is smoother and, and, and nice. <laughs> so I'm going to add some pores in here for that. Oops, I'm going to do a morph target, delete the previous one, store new morph target. And basically, I'm going to do the same thing, I'm just going to go over the head, um, just using the reference to see exactly where the, the big pores are. And start to create that sort of chicken like <laughs> uh, skin for this cast, I worry. Alright, so as it goes down, the, the pores become tighter and tighter. And they're harder to see. It's more in the head, actually, that you can really see them. Uh, but this will create a nice, sort of like, bumpy surface as well. That's very, very particular of this, of this creature. So hopefully you can see that um, those, the, the skin brushes that I have in the serious guides, they're, they're more of a, a sculpting brush or a sculpting details brush rather than click and drag like the, the usual alphas that you might find somewhere else. There's some of them that you can just click and drag, of course, because that's that's another really powerful uh, process. It's just that um, in my in my own workflow, I prefer to use this this way, and then just refine things bit by bit. Um, and to be honest, that's really how I how I create the the tools that I create. Um, I I don't know if uh, if you if you've been following some of my work um, or at least the the Sirius guides or, or the Sirius Live sessions, um, you might notice that some of the tools that I have online that I share are very, how would you say it, uh, not random, but very specific. Let's say that's that's more that's more the word. Not random, but very specific. And, and that is because I actually start working on a project and I feel the need to uh, create these brushes or create whatever tools like, for example, the um, the fiber mesh brushes, the fiber mesh kit, the, the kit, the fiber mesh grooming kit, 
it's something that I that I found really useful for my own workflow. And then I, th I thought, you know what, let's, um, let's make this available because it could help other people as well. Um, so that's why the, the, the resources that I share are, are kind of like random. It's like, you know, sometimes I have uh, skin brushes. The, the, the other day, well, when I released the um, rock brushes, it was just about the rocks and that sort of thing. And that is purely based on the, <clears throat> on the type of projects that I'm currently working on. So if you get those brushes, you you'll see that um, they're they're kind of like um, I'm I'm sharing what I actually use in my day-to-day -day basis, really. Okay. So that's um that's a lot of pores. <laughs> I'm just gonna add a few more here. Uh, here at the bottom, they're a little bit more, a bit stronger. Again, so I covered everything with pores and not every part has a very, you know, very distinctive or very visible pore, right? So again, part of the process is having enough things and then having the, or like having the train or train your eye to to recognize that not everything is the same, right? Not the the whole head of the cassowar is not just pores, right? But that's why we created the the layer, and that's why we created the morph target. So the the steps in the process is to morph target, save morph target, then save uh, start recording a layer, do do whatever you need to do. Obviously, it helps if you have time <laughs> to do it a little bit more thorough than what I've been doing. I just so try to maintain everything contained within this stream because. We have like an hour and I want to actually um, show you the process of poly painting as well for this character. Um, but again, what I was saying is uh, you save, you do, you save the target, your layer, do all the, the pores and sculpting. Um, and then you actually start refining the placement by using the more brush. So let's do that. And after that, we're going to blend these layers or, or modulate the, the intensity of these layers. So again, based on the references, this part of the eye is quite leathery. So it's more, more of a smooth surface here. Same as here. And I'm, I'm applying a very, you know, not not a lot of, um, not a lot of pressure in my toilet, so that I can refine the the details bit by bit. Because the, the morph brush is pretty strong. I can just do this and remove. It's kind of like erasing it, right? So I just want to do it very softly. Um, this area as well. It's not as, as strong. In fact, before I keep doing morph target, I'm going to bring in the inflate brush. And I just want to inflate some of these pores that are too like too open and the cassa worry the tide in this case the more tide okay that makes more sense all right um morph morph let's do morphing So you'll see as as I go over these areas that I you know exaggerated before and then also use the inflate brush, these pores are becoming a bit more subtle. Um, but I, I need to remember as I do this that I still have the the layer. So uh, I'm not trying to get a perfect depth or a perfect um, intensity in these pores just with the with the morph target, I can also rely on on a more general tweaking using the layer. Sort of refine everything at once with the layer.
And again, this is a workflow that I use uh, for the creatures as well, um, for different different stuff. I I go into to, uh, into a bit more detail, for example, on um, uh, the extra mile course. I I show this as well, a uh, bit also with um, the HD geometry, which works very similar. You know, but I'm uh, I'm just saying it because in 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 the course, of course, I have much more time to to go over all the the processes and and go into more depth. Uh, but you know, this should give you a general idea of the workflow. All right, so we have um, wrinkles. Now we have pores. Let's do um, what else we can do. Let's go ahead and do let's see some kind of like bumpy surface, although. Mm. Yeah, this this area at the bottom is a uh, is a bit bumpy. So let's go ahead and do that. So for that, I'm gonna go for uh, generic skin, and then I'm gonna use this skin imperfection. So uh, I'm gonna go generic skin first. See what that gives me. I'm gonna create a delete morph target. I already used that. I'm gonna st store a new morph target, and I'm going to start recording a new layer. So this brush gives me. Oh no, this is the one. okay, this one could be good. This just gives me um a nice pattern for a base skin. That's not the one I wanted. Um I think it's this one, bumpy skin. There we go. Yep. So this is a nice way to generate some bumps very quickly. So I'm gonna use this one all around in this brush, in sorry, in this layer to add bumpy areas. Not so much at the top of the head, it's more for the areas that um, get sort of like compression folds, they become quite bumpy. So I'm just gonna add a few bumps. This one, um, I'm not gonna actually modulate it too much with the morph target. I just wanna add some surface noise and variation here. Maybe here at the back as well. Um, sorry, I just <laughs> zoned out a little bit. Let me see the chat. Um, is the thank you, very, thank you very much. Glad you like it. Thanks, Chris. Good to have you here. Chris Seher. I never know how to pronounce your your surname. Chris Seher, Seher. Chris. Chris Seher, 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 maybe, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Chris is one of my students at the Extra Mile. He's really, really, really good at, um, you know, creating these monster kaiju type of things. He's working on a really, really cool one. Um, I don't know if he wants to, to share just yet, so I'm, I'm not gonna put him on the spot and actually share his work. Uh, he's working on a really cool monster right now. And he did the, um, the concept for Gamera, uh, the one that got featured in the 3D Total website. I think it's the 3D Total. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. Um, so really, really cool work. Uh, Francisco, Paul, is it difficult to find a junior oh. job in Spain? The industry is non-existent. Um, I, I'm not too familiar with the industry in Spain, um, but in all honesty, like I have quite a few um, students from Spain in the Extra Mile course and some of them actually work in the industry so I wouldn't like I could I could ask around to be honest um, I know the the guys over the over at the uh, the Extra Mile course they do a little bit of networking as well in the in the community we have a private community um, so I would ask around but I wouldn't know I just done I know that the industry is it's pretty small everywhere <laughs> um, and not being in, for example, in San Francisco, well, not San Francisco, maybe LA, Vancouver, uh, Toronto, London, I guess those are the, the hubs, the hubs of, of the industry, I guess. So not being there might, might be a little bit hard, but I'm sure there's, there's work, um, especially as a junior, like a lot of the, the upcoming studios are always, are always looking for a junior, um, a junior artist. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think it would be too hard. Um, it's just applying yourself and trying to work on the portfolio, 
make sure that the portfolio pieces are of quality rather than quantity. And um, yeah, I don't know if that, sorry, I don't know if that it's a straight answer. <laughs> so I, I just don't know much of, of the industry in Spain, to be honest. But uh, what I could say is based on the on the students that I have that live in Spain. Um, I think there is there's space. It, it is a it is a tough um, industry, but there's space to to find a junior, especially a junior role. All right. So I have uh, another third layer. This one is just let's call it bumps. I'm gonna delete the morph target. I'm gonna change that uh, bumps. Uh, now what I like to do is create some kind of um, you know, skin pattern or something that looks more of a skin, because this this is still pretty pretty soft uh, in a way. So uh, there's a few. This generic skin is a good one. The skin base is also a good one in this case. I'll show you what this one does. I'm gonna start uh, store morph target record. Maybe this one is too strong and too detailed. So this creates a, a nice skin base. Uh, with wrinkles and bumps as, at the same time. I want to find something that is... Oh no! Ooh. I'll do a quick save because it tried to... It almost um, froze in there. Every application I find requires minimum three years of experience. Yeah, sometimes that's that's sometimes the case, but I found that, uh, and this is just based on my own experience, that if you have a solid portfolio piece, sometimes that could override any any experience that you have. Um, you might not be able to go straight into you know the position that you are aiming for, but you can say, hey, um, I only have one year experience, or I have no experience, but my experience based on building my portfolio, here is what I have, this is what I can do, um, give me, you know, you can say, give me three, six months of, you know, the, um, kind of like the, what's the name? I forgot. I totally got blank here. Um, oh, what's the name? Probation time. <laughs> I think this is called, so pro probation? No, it's not probation. Anyway, I forgot. Basically the time that, uh, the company or the studio has to, see whether you're working in the you're, you're a good fit for the studio uh, or not um, so you have three months six months depending on or a one or a month so you could say give me give me three months to prove myself and um, I'm, I'm eager to learn you know I'm happy to you know maybe stay one hour after after hours to get into the um, into the routine learning the pipeline whatever that is and then you know uh, work from there and uh, to be honest, that's something that it's. Uh, I think it works. <laughs> if you if you show that passion, if you show that you have commitment, uh, most of the time, like the, the experience. I mean, it's it's really good to have experience, but sometimes the just the portfolio would override most of the things. I'm just trying to find uh, this one. My work. It's a bit too much. Um, I have a few here that might work. Oh, here, this one. This one is the one that I was looking for. So see this pattern? Uh, it creates a very simple pattern, but uh, when you combine it with the other details, it gives that sort of like leathery type of skin. Uh, how can I buy these alphas? Again, uh, this is what I've been saying. Not These are not alphas. Or is, is they're brushes using alphas, but they're not just the alphas that you would click and drag to to produce these details. These are actually sculpting brushes that have details or alphas um, as part of it. Uh, you can go to the Seabrush Guides website. Let me actually, I've been just talking about it and I haven't show you. Um, I know that most of you guys that are regulars here know what I'm talking about, but just for the, the newcomers, I'll share it, yeah. Uh, by the way, thanks so much everyone that has been contributing to the Creature Pack. Uh, we have collected a ton of money to donate. I think we are in over over four and a half grand um, between all of us. So that's incredible. Thank you so much, guys. Um, so yeah, I'm just mentioning because this pack, this creature pack has a time limit that is going to be available. And then 
is never going to be available again just because this is the the, the one that i'm using to collect um, money to donate to the CFA Australia for the bushfires. So we have three days, three days and two hours to get the creature pack. That's all in the Sea Guide um, website. So I'll share with you the link. So if you go to the Sea Guide's website and you go to resources and you go to Sea Brush brushes, uh, there's there are a bunch of uh, free brushes that you can try as well. Um, they're actually pretty good, I think. All these, all of these ones are free. They're pretty good uh, and they give you an idea of how the double action brushes work and that sort of thing uh, but if you click here on skin uh, well this one's not the skin actually if you go down um, you'll find this uh, silver skin brushes pack just click on this big button I'll put the, the link and that's the one that I've been using so all of these brushes and this is the brushes that I use to create the bumps and everything for uh, my ankle festa this guy here um, this is also, uh, by the way, if um, I'm pretty sure you know Marlon Nunez, but he also used this pack to um, detail the Morpheus um, likeness that he did. He's just amazing. Like it's his likeness is just on point. Um, and he um, he actually just released. Well, I don't think he's just released a few months ago. Actually, he has a course on you know, stylized characters. He's he's really really good. Um, so go and check him out as well. <laughs> um, so big thanks to Marlon that um, basically used the, this pack of brushes to to show how they've been used in this and uh, the creation of, of Morpheus and have I have some some Im images here so he basically took uh, some of the ones that come in the pack and, and showcase how or where he used those different alphas and all that to create um, the likeness which is amazing right uh, anyway so yeah and here you have the the explanation of the four type of brushes and how they work. So the double action brushes are the ones that I've been showing you. You have some um, alpha drag brushes, which is the standard way of uh, alphas, how they work. Um, custom smooth brushes and you know you can build more brushes now that you have the ability to do the extractor brushes in zero. You can use a combination of the brushes in this pack and then extract those brushes. Uh, but you can also use them with um, poly paint. So it's another good way to use the alphas um, or the brushes that come in this pack, just using them with poly paint. Anyway, um, that's just quite uh, quickly. This is the type of thing that you can achieve with the, you know, quick examples of what you can do with the brushes. That's all in, did I say, I forgot to share it, sorry. <laughs> um, there it is, <laughs> sorry. I was just talking about it. Anyway, it's there and about the creature pack thanks again guys it's it's a uh, it's a massive effort and it's very um heartwarming to see like the community pulling together to to help a little bit in in this chaotic world so um i'll be i've been updating everyone soon uh once i do the donation and see how much we can raise Alrighty. um Cool, cool, cool. So let's go ahead and do the pattern, right? So is this the one that we just created? Bombs? I think so. This is a new alpha, a new layer. All right. So now here we can start adding this this alpha. All right. This one is going to be relatively quick. Gonna increase the brush size, and you'll see that I'm starting to sort of like override a lot of the details. I know that doesn't look great right now, but that's part of the of the process, at least in this specific workflow. Uh, there are many different ways to approach this, but um, the one that I'm showing you is just basically having a bunch of details, almost like randomly placed in a way. Um, you can be more thorough, like I said about. The placement of these details but then you have the ability to refine not only the placement but the intensity both with the um with the layers as well as the morph target and that's what i'll do in just a second so just want to have more of this pattern probably here in the front is is ideal looking at the reference it's more evident here
So you'll see also little by little we start to to add something that looks very uh, refined in terms of of details and we haven't even tweaked the layers. So all right um, I think this one is good let's go ahead and use the morph target and refine some of this especially here at the top because this this pattern this skin pattern is not as as obvious in this area this is mostly pores and tiny wrinkles in fact we can manually add a bit more wrinkles I think we can exaggerate them a little bit more here so again just softening this a bit All right. Cool. I think we need more of these. Actually, let me just check the references as well. Ah, it's fine. I think it looks all right. Okay. So now that we have these details in place we can go ahead and um, modulate them and, and tweak them a bit so what I'll do is I'm gonna stop recording the layer uh, still have the morph target but I'm gonna delete it because it's a morph target just for the the pattern oops and I'm gonna select the standard brush just for the mean uh, in the meantime I'm gonna do a quick save and I'm gonna go ahead and start playing with the layers so the one that I want to reduce the most is the bumps. So I'm going to start with that just by tweaking the bumps layer, the pores as well, and the wrinkles. So of course that reduced the amount of details quite a bit. Um, so I think I was happy with this initial one. So I think more pores and a bit more bumps as well. Again, this is something else that I would do, you know, that I spend quite a bit of time um, just tweaking, make sure that each layer has the right contribution. But like I said, using the morph target allows you to uh, variate that intensity, not just a one to zero values like which you have with the with the layers uh, what add-on are you using for the head on the corner um, this thing no this is this is something from series 2020 it's called the cam view I just have a custom cam view so I I, I, I took this model I created this model uh, with the poly paint and everything um, actually sorry I didn't create I didn't build it myself um, I took it I forgot from from where sorry it's a it's a medical website that allows you to download um, STL for free. Mm, can't remember the name, but it's a it's a medical website, so it's very accurate. It has like even the the uh, nervous system and all that. So I took that and I sliced it off and customized it in a way, and basically created this cam view. So I have a bunch of cu custom cam views. If I click next here, you'll see I have a skeleton. Um, skull, the the human body there, and that's it. The rest of the the standard was the standard ones. If you wanna do that, it's super simple. Just have whatever creature you want or whatever character you you want to have in the cam view. Um, in this case, if I want the this cassowary to be my head, I go to the preference, go to cam view, and I click make cam view. So the series just go and go ahead and do that it takes some photos and now I can see the cast I worry in like little thumbnail so that's what I have it's not an add-on it's just 2020 series 2020 which is awesome do you have an advice for open mouth mouth modeling um, I could give you some advice uh, if you could be a, a bit more specific about the open mouth modeling what's the purpose of that and what would be that um, yeah what would be the purpose um, 
one thing that I want to do now is we still have like half an hour. I think we can cover some quick poly paint and just wrap this one up. But I just want to add some details to the to the horn or to the crest area. So for that, I have uh, other brushes, not these ones, um, which are the rock brushes. So I'm going to use those ones. Uh, because again, the, the texture is kind of like very rocky. So let's see. That's a good one. The thing with this is that there's heaps of brushes. So I need to remember which one is the one that I could use for this. That was close. There's one that is called the layered. layer let's try this one oops let's do a storm of target new layer let's try that one yeah so this one could be one um, not entirely happy with that I'll go for gravity hmm. cliff builder all right this is the one I'll we could use this one. I mean, the the effect is very strong and it looks like a rock, but we'll we'll tweak it to make it look like the actual cassowary crest. So it just generates this very rocky surface. But again, using it in combination with the with the other tools in ZBrush, we can generate something that looks very very interesting. And again, that's just a sculpting layer, right? Or a sculpting brush. Okay, so obviously that is too much again, uh, but it's following the same the same workflow that I've been showing you, um, exaggerating things and then just knocking them down a little bit, or toning the the amount of details a bit. I'm also going to use my damp standard brush, or actually the the butter knife, the custom butter knife, um, to add some more obvious indentations because so far it's been quite flat. I'm just gonna use a reference here. And the damp standard brush as well, with a very tiny brush size, just to exaggerate some of these lines. And again, I'm using the references, but every single crest of the of the reference that I have is different from each other um, in terms of like this type of indentation. So I'm just trying to figure out um, where these indentations happen for the most part, and then made them up <laughs> also with the standard brush I'm gonna hold the alt key just to push certain areas in a bit more and I think that's that's looking all right all right just gonna add a bit more volume here at the back to increase that sort of layering effect or sort of I don't know how would you call it um, compressing all the time I guess in this area and with a smaller brush size I'm also going to add some like little ridges of bone in here I think I think this actually I don't know I don't I don't know but it might be bone Actually, I don't remember seeing a cassowary's skull. So this might be bone or it might be just like a rhino that is just hair or not hair, but <laughs> you know, compressed hair. Um, what is the, what's the, the chemical keratin? No, it's the same as the nails. Anyway, um, I think that's, 
that's looking a little bit better. So adding a bit more of this surface noise and surface details just with a standard brush. I think in this area a little bit as well we need some some more some more of these details, manually placed details. Because the, the crest is something that we didn't work too much. All right, um, but what I'll do now is I'll take the trim dynamic and still within the same layer and with the uh, with the current morph target, I'm just gonna flatten some of these shapes, some of these bumps, right? And this is just flattening them. I'm not using the morph target. And the morph target should also uh, help with the smoothing between the flattening that I'm doing right now and the original the original mesh or the original surface. And whatever I did, like maybe too much flattening, then the morph brush will help to bring those um, volumes back. All right, so let's go to the morph brush. And I know I'm rushing a little bit through this. I really wanna get to polypane and we have about 25 minutes. And I'm gonna use the morph brush to um, recover some of the smooth areas that I have, uh, you know, or that I want to keep. And those smooth areas are mostly towards the front of this crest. Right, and the, and the rest of the details that could be just texture um, in fact, it's mostly texture, um, but I think that works fine. Uh, in fact, we can add a bit more of kind of like bumpy. There's one brush that I can use for that. I'll show you what I mean. Um, so not goosebumps, generic skin. I think this skin imperfection would work fine for what I need. I'm gonna do a quick save because <laughs> it almost crashed. Um, let me check the chat very quickly. Hello, hey, Iris, Iris, Iris lyricist, lyricist artist. <laughs> uh, Fernando, why modif why modified topology don't appear on my series to delete subdivision? Um, why modified topology don't appear on my series to delete subdivision? Modified topology. So in modified topology, you, you usually don't delete subdivision. If you want to delete subdivision, it's from the, ge the geometry palette. So here, you delete lower or delete higher. The modified topology is in here, which you can delete hidden, but not subdivision. I don't know if that's the question. Um, Pablo está viendo genial, muchas gracias. Thank you very much, guys. I want to sculpt mouth, but when I click Dynamage, lip seems bad. I think most with okay. I think what you mean is that if you want to model a open mouth and you're using Dynamage, um, if you leave a gap that is not very obvious for zeros, because Dynamage is just trying to recreate uh, the topology, uh, it's going to obviously collapse those lips, and you won't have the mouth bug or the interior of the mouth. So the best thing to do in that case is to um, work with Dynamage to a point that you're happy with the overall volumes and then use the Sculptures Pro to create the mouth bag. So in other words, um, you can just take parts of like the inside of the lip, push it in and then use the Sculptures Pro to add their geometry. Uh, that that requires a, a bit more of a, I mean, it's, it's a quick, it's a quick tip, but it will take longer to explain in practice. So I probably won't do it today, but I will keep it in mind for the next time. Uh, where do you get the brushes from? So I'm just showing some of the the brushes that I have in the Zeroge Guides. Just go to the Zeroge Guides website. I already put the link. Just scroll back uh, in the comments. Um, oh, so you're saying you just got them from the art station. Mm, maybe you didn't get the, the right ones. I don't have brushes in art station. Yeah, maybe if you if you get them from our station, you must have gotten them from someone else. 
uh, Richard. I don't have brushes in ArtStation. Why are, what are you thinking to the next project? <laughs> no, I ha I'm, I'm still working on this one. I don't have um, head right now to work on, uh, to think about the next one. I'm just gonna move faster now because I really wanna get into polypaint. So this, this bumpy or skin imperfection is a, is a really good one to add these type of things very quickly. And I just wanna add some more um, surface noise to this crest. Maybe extend this a little bit to the big. All right, and of course, let's go to maybe the morph brush again. And just retouch this, so it's not as strong the effect. So it's a lot of uh, morph brush and, and layers all working together to to achieve this this effect or like the entire uh, the entire details all right I think that is looking good I'm gonna just add a couple more of tiny lines in here just to because I think I overread them with the with the morph Alrighty, so I'm gonna stop recording now and I'm going to delete my morph target. Do a quick save and now let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and actually duplicate my head. Take this one, go into the lowest subdivision level, drop it into the originals and now I have a duplicate basically where I'm gonna take my layers and I'm gonna bake them all. So bake all. So now I don't have any layers now that I tweak them and you know um, play around with the intensity of each one of those and so on and so forth. Um, I just want to do a bit more of manual wrinkling here with the damn standard brush uh, or actually let's bring in the slash brush slash three so it's a bit more intense um, so I'm going to store a morph target and I'm just going to do Try to follow the the reference that I have. There's a very strong set of small wrinkles around the back here that flows into the, the rest of the neck and into the the eyes. So this lash brush is really good for this. In fact, some of the, the detailing brushes that I use uh, to create wrinkles are based on the slash brush. So I took the, the slash brush, added a custom alpha, um, tweaked some of the settings, and voila. All right. I think that's much better. I'm gonna turn off symmetry so that I can work without symmetry around here. And this is something that I spoke about, um, or we talked about in the previous stream, uh, about leaving the the center line of the symmetry kind of like empty or with not too many details. And then once you get to the stage, you break up the symmetry by simply, you know, going over the the center line and and refining the details in here. And that should that should do the trick. Especially in this character that, you know, is is not gonna be very obvious or is not gonna be very you won't be able to see both of the sides at the same time in a way. But you will definitely see either the back or the front uh, and you will notice that that's symmetrical. Alright. 
again I can I can stay in this <laughs> detailing mode for for a while so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna try to limit myself because again it's something that I also very um, enjoy very much just you know going over the details checking the references um, building things bit by bit uh, of course this all um, what I'm doing with this um, with this brush is purely cutting through the the volumes right it's not um, it's not adding any extra wrinkles or any extra not wrinkles sorry extra volume or or mass to to the wrinkles right it's just cutting through so um, something that you could do after using this slash brush for example and you have all the details that we did with the layers is to go with a standard brush that won't remove like the, the standard brush won't override the details that you created it's just gonna push them along the normal um, and then just inflate or the inflate brush as well um, and just create a bit more volume for the for these wrinkles so I'll give you an example of what I mean um, I reckon I'll do more of these wrinkles later on because again it's very repetitive um, we'll just jump into f into polypane in the last 15 minutes uh, but just to show you what would be the last step of this process will be to bring in the standard brush and I'm going to activate symmetry so that is faster here but I'm just adding volumes or adding some some meat to these newly added small wrinkles that's all get out of uh, symmetry and as you can see it it doesn't destroy the pores and anything that we did before uh, it just inflates or add volumes like I said and it also helps to tighten those crevices so it's a combination of the two you know the two worlds the automated kind of like yeah, automated world which is using the custom brushes and a bit of the manual work which is in the, you know is absolutely necessary to get something working that looks that looks good all right so uh, I'll probably go ahead and do more of these wrinkles you know uh, after we finish just because I want to get into polypane and that's something that we could do afterwards so I'm gonna do a quick save and let's go into polypane mode for the last 15 minutes so if you have any any question put it in the chat I'll try to get to that um, I have a question about C composite is there a way to go from substance painter to Photoshop like uh, an export preset um, yeah you can uh, you mean like once you do the composite in silver in substance send it to Photoshop um, if so, yeah, you can. Exp there, there's a link already in Substance that allows you to go to Photoshop. Although I'm not sure if that's the one that you're asking for. Um, how do you, how do, how do layers play in role in this workflow? I think um, you just arrived a little bit later. I, I covered the 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 workflow of the layers, um, so you might have to rewatch that. Just because we have about 15 minutes and I want to get into Polypaint, but it's covered in this. If you just rewind a little bit, it will be there. When is too much details uh, too much? When is too much detail too much? Um, that I would say that will be. It's a it's a it's a good question. It's it's about learning that it, it comes with experience, I think. But it's also learning about the the balance. You know, if you maintain balance, um, I think in this case there is a lot of detail. Um, especially in the wrinkles and all that as a sculpture but you'll see once I get to polypane in just a second um, that that helps to unify things and also it breaks apart that intensity of the details so um, hopefully it will make sense but yeah it's I would recommend if you're just getting started to use a lot of reference and and really analyze the main shapes right um, you know in the cassowary for example the crest you know it looks like it has details because of the textures and all that but it's actually very smooth surface compared to the wrinkles so there's a, a big contrast in in the cassowary itself so in this area 
I would say this is less details and whereas this area is more, right? Um, now within the area that has a lot of details, you also have areas that are really detailed and areas that are not as detailed. So that that's why important to get these, I would say, let me just clear this out. 10 minutes for polypaint, <laughs> right? I'll do this very quickly. So uh, I would say this, um, this shape of the neck, for example, that would be the primary shape. And that's, that's, that all this has to do with the details, right? Um, I would say these, these shapes here, that would be the secondary shapes. And what we've been doing today, adding these extra wrinkles and the transition between all these folds and all that, that's tertiary details. So it's just a matter of, um, again, that comes with experience, but like looking at references is really good idea. Um, finding a, a balance between all these three, that's what, um, that's what allows you to say, all right, there's too much details here, or the details is overriding the, the secondary shapes, for example, or the, the primary shape. So um, you're losing the, the volume. Um, but yeah, that's something that comes with experience, I think. Um, you can definitely um, learn a lot by just, you know, um, watching or looking at references. I'm gonna switch to the skin material. I'm gonna select, I have the standard brush. Uh, which I'm going to turn into a painting brush. And let's see if we can do some quick poly paint. We have about 10 minutes. I wanted to have more time, but this is what we have. So let's go ahead and work on this. So obviously I'm gonna start with a blue palette. So I'm gonna select uh, a rather saturated blue color and I'm gonna fill that object. I'm gonna enable symmetry. And then I'm gonna block out the colors very quickly. So there is a lighter blue here at the top of the head. Oops. There we go. Hmm. Oh, I have a an alpha. Do I? No. I have a texture. Oh right, because I did a yeah, never mind. Um, so I'm gonna add, this is kind of like blocking the, the colors. And I'm gonna rush through these as, as well. I approach the poly paint um, essentially the same way that I approach the the sculpting. I do big, um, you know, with a big brush, establishing the, the main chunks of color first, and then just refine bit by bit the rest. So that's kind of like the, the approach that I use for everything, really. This area is a little bit more purpley or more saturated in a way. So just adding a bit of purple helps to accentuate the fact that it's very, very strong, that blue color there. Cool. Um, I'm gonna add a bit of yellow, uh, or just a tiny bit of yellow here. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna go for a dark, almost black color here for the beak. And I'm gonna extend that to the crest. And to be honest, this this part is pretty dark anyway. There's some some bleeding of that uh, blue into the into this area, but it's for the most part it's pretty dark. I'm gonna add a bit of brown color here, just to um, I'm gonna also reduce my brush size just to make sure I separate this a little bit because it's very very obvious, very distinctive, the separation between the this area and the and the actual skin. All right, so that sort of like covers a little bit of the the blocking of the colors in this area. 
I'm gonna add a bit more of these light brownish colors in here. And there is a tiny bit more of a kind of like a yellow tone towards the the corners of the mouth. That's what I want to do. Well, that's what I wanted to do before. So it's kind of like a saturated yellow. Not in all of them, but I think it's cool. It's a cool way to break this part. It's kind of like that. Yeah, it works. <laughs> all right. How are we with time? All right, so about seven minutes. Let's go ahead and do the these other areas, which are obviously the biggest contrast there is in, in terms of color in the cassowary. I'm going to start with a dark, semi-desaturated red. I need to reduce my brushes just so that the that I can cover less areas painting on this. All right, a little bit of red here as well. So I reckon we can wrap it up with the with the blocking of the um, polypen, of course. It will take more time to get something more accurate, but um, I think this this will be fine. I'm gonna go over these areas here with a um, reddish color, and that sort of goes into dark brown almost as it goes up. I'm gonna reduce my brush size. More dark and saturated. One of the things um, I think is very important to keep in mind when doing this is the, as well as the, the sculpting, right, is working on those transitions. So right now it's super soft because it's just the, the blocking, but some of the transitions of these pieces to the actual blue side of things is actually very harsh, um, very strong. I'm going to add more of the orange, very saturated orange here. I think that, that works as well. Um, I think for the most part this is working. I'm going to make the crest a bit lighter because it's too dark. So I'm going to go ahead and select my masking brush, get out of perspective, and I'm going to mask out this area, blur it a tiny bit, invert that mask, and I'm going to actually hide it. So I still have the mask, but I just hit it. And I'm going to go for the saturated brown color. All right, um, and we have about four, four minutes. So just to wrap it up, I'm going to show you a couple of techniques that um, you can use with this um, poly painting. So um, there's actually a tiny bit of green, or like almost green around the eye here. I think it's just a visual effect of the mixing kind of like a brown color with the with the blue, with a very saturated blue, but it's really interesting. Um, anyway, so I'll, I'll go into details later, but that sort of like blocks out a nice look for this Kasawari guy. I think um, I'm going to refine the transition here a bit more with the blues. And also, like I said, there's kind of like a bleeding of this color into the eye. Not in all of them, but I think it's cool in one of the references. Just as a as a highlight of the of the eyelid, it looks pretty cool. Again, so this is already refining that poly paint, but um, I think it works. It works as a as a blockout. Um, so a couple of things that I want to show you 
before we wrap it up is uh, one is using the cavity mask so I'm gonna do that very quickly and then also the custom brushes how you can turn that into a painting brush so um, let's go ahead and do a quick save as well and I'm gonna go to cavity click on mask by cavity and see which is gonna mask the cavities <laughs> obviously so that's super useful uh, I'm gonna go ahead and blur that once just to maybe that is too much um, you can actually tweak how much blur is happening by uh, adjusting it so if you go to mask adjust this is the blur that is currently happening and this is the, the curve so if I let's, um, do something a little bit more relaxed something like that and apply you'll see it just blurs things a tiny bit more right based on this curve so I think that works let's go ahead and invert that mask and hide it so now everything but the crevices is masked and we can go with a darker color in this area for example maybe desaturated oops so this color but way more desaturated and darker so that's gonna help us um, bring back some of those details and pores just using the mask you see there um, also darker colors here so I consider this to be also part of the blocking um, I wouldn't say this is already detailing I'm just using the mask to to block out some of the darker areas within um, within the crevices which I think is important but it's not necessarily detailing it So just adding this helps to, you know, reinforce the, the details that we created with the sculpting process. Let's clear that mask. Bit of highlights in there. All right, and the second thing that I wanted to show is the custom sort of brushes to uh, using some of the custom brushes that I already have and explained but turn them into you know something else like a painting brush so um, let's say we can take this one let's see what this gives us the lip detailer so I'm whoops alright uh, I'm gonna turn off the C add so now this one if I enable sorry if I disable C add and enable RGB this is going to have I'm gonna do a very strong color so you can see the effect it's going to give me this effect as I paint um, so that's just turning a sculpting brush from that pack into something useful for painting so that's really good because it's gonna help you break apart the the colors so in this case I think this one works really nicely for um, just a bit of color variation here in the crest but of course we can use um, anything like this uh, the skin clear pores that's the one that we use for doing this effect uh, but we can do the same thing we can turn off C add enable uh, RGB I'm gonna increase you know just showing you what what this does um, you can get this very nice weird looking pattern so that could be really interesting for adding variation of color here some highlights and some dark darker colors so I can click and drag to select the right the, the right color that I have around here uh, but I can make it lighter and apply this you know it's is it's very subtle which is good when you start to fine-tune the, the poly paint and it sort of helps to to break apart the the transitions a bit more so that's another way that you can use these um, brushes with the alphas to to turn them into poly paint brushes another really good one that could work for this process nicely I think would be let's see this heavy acne um, it's actually really cool in terms of sculpting but I think it would work nicely I'm gonna do again a very bright color to see to show you 
what it does. Oh no, this is not the one. This is just a click and drag. Um, where is it? Uh, skin damage imperfections, that one. Right? So this one will give you these imperfections uh, if you're sculpting, obviously, but in polypaint, it also creates this nice sort of bumpy texture feel like um, which is really cool to to help with the transitions between the block of colors that you establish right so probably here we're gonna go for a lighter color reduce my brush size how are we doing time okay we're over a couple of minutes so I'm gonna wrap it up here guys um, but hopefully this gives you an idea of that of that whole process and it's just about refinement once you establish the the block of color that you want it's about refining the placement again this is pretty soft so I would go with a standard brush select this color make it sure it's a little bit darker here and start doing this manually just refine the, the transition a bit more And that's what you know. That's what takes time, and it's again more of a repetitive action in here, but it it really helps. So it's again doing a little bit of the. Whoops. No, don't crash, don't crash. <laughs> okay, I'll do this afterwards. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here, guys. Hopefully, you'll find this this stream useful in a way, uh, and I think this concludes this project of the cassowary uh, of course I'm gonna go over uh, certain areas just tweak it a little bit uh, hopefully maybe do some some posing just turning the head <laughs> a little bit and that would be it for this cassowary um, all right so let me just check the chat really quick uh, for last minute questions what's the name of the program you use for the to draw a series it's called epic pen yep thanks comics legend um, cool 10 minutes poly pen <laughs> challenge that's right you have uh, perspective activated now. Right now it's off. Uh, I did it because I, I had I wanted to mask, but that's it. There is the perspective. Um, can you do a quick render in ZBrush when finished polypane? Amazing creature is the best. Uh, cool. So yeah, a quick render. Just click polypane. <laughs> Sorry, BPR. Uh, we can actually check the render settings. I'm gonna increase the angle of the shadow a tiny bit. There it is. That's the that's the render. That's the render. Um, I always disable it when modeling, but I'm not sure if you should switch it. Sometimes it's lose perspective. Um, yeah, I, I switch between perspective on and off depending on what I'm doing. Uh, for if you're doing likeness, I would say keep it on all the time. <laughs> so perspective on. Um, go to sleep. All right, sleep well. <laughs> Alrighty, so that's it for me today, guys. Uh, hopefully you find it useful. And if you have any questions about this, uh, you can just tag me in social media. Usually I'm pretty good to, uh, pretty fast to reply in there. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you next week when um, we start a new project. So I don't know what is it going to be, but we start a new project. Um, and in a, remember, you have a couple of days if you haven't got the creature pack. If you want to contribute to um, to a bit of you know a bit of a relief to the uh, bushfires in Australia, uh, so I'll be doing the donation uh, after. Well, in three days the the pack finishes, and then I have to wait until the money comes into the account, and then I'll do the the donation. But this this is happening this week, so a uh, big thank you for everyone you know to everyone that has helped with the pack. Um, it's a really it's it's really, like I said very heartwarming to see everyone you know pulling together to uh, to help a little bit in this situation. Um, and I think that's all we can do at this point. So I will keep you posted with that. Thanks so much again, and I'll see you next week. So cheers, guys. Bye.